Welcome. You're watching the Thrift Store Rundown, where when it comes to bringing Hollywood Homer on a budget, we are rarely on a break. I could go on and on about why I'm excited for this video, but if you watched last week, I'll just simply say this. One good friend's video deserves another. This is the May 31st, 2021 issue of People Magazine purchased for $1.99 with the award exclusive cover story going inside HBO Max's long awaited and Emmy nominated Friends Reunion. Could we be any more excited? Exclusive interviews with the stars, secrets from the set, and more. To quote Courtney Cox, it was so emotional. Well, since I'm kind of new to the Friends cinematic universe, I'm not going to try and sow too much emotion, but thanks in large part to my crush on Courtney Cox, aka Monica, as you found out about last week, that's going to be rather difficult. And really as a whole, they've been there for us, so now it's time I be there for them. You'll find their article on page 34. On page 7, in the editor's letter, Editor-in-Chief Dan Rakeford Pitching on one of the painstakingly recreated sets, one of the apartment sets, Rachel's or Monica's, for the HBO Max special, explains how some of his time in New York mirrored that of the Central Park sits, right here. And below that, three People Magazine staffers explain what the shows meant to them, and the timelessness as a whole. The people behind people. And the people behind these people becoming household names in print. I assure you, People Magazine's done a lot of friends' covers over the years. If there's anyone, and any one pop culture entity, that knows how to cover a friends reunion as monumental as this, it's People. However, they might have some competition with this. I've already reviewed this as part of my Roses and Rosewood series, talking about two other Warner Brothers properties uh, that I hold in high regard, The Bachelor and Pretty Little Liars. I hold one in high every regard to the other, you might know. But, they also have an article that's similar to this, but it's a little more scandal forward. Inside the Friends Reunion, Fumes and Control Freaks. We'll get to that a little bit later. But before we get to the article itself in here, we gotta highlight at least one of the two components that make Roses and Rose run one of my favorite series to do on TSR. And that would be, in this case, The Bachelorette. It didn't work out for Sean Booth amazingly, so Caitlin Bristow, one of the most polarizing bachelorettes in the show's history, at least in the Chris Harrison era, said yes to Jason Tartik, another bachelor alumni. Jason Tartik came third in the 14th season of the ABC show. That would be The Bachelorette. The two started dating in 2009 after Bristow split from her season's winner and former fiancé, Sean Booth. They currently are doing a podcast together. And by the way, I gotta tip a hat to Jojo and Jordan. Jordan Rogers, Jojo Fletcher. They tied a knot after the longest engagement in Bachelorette history. But enough about that. It's on to the main event! Friends forever! Yes, long live the friends. Long live the Central Park sets. We'll be family for life. It's the reunion the world has been waiting for. The six stars reflect on their beloved show and why they'll always be there for one another. This article is by Julie Jordan, with photographs by Mark Seliger. I have to say, Mark did a pretty good job capturing the cast looking oh so dapper. The gentlemen, David Schwimmer, Matthew Perry, Matt LeBlanc, and the other half of the Central Park Six. I gotta say, the better looking half. Come on, what do you expect from me? <laughs> uh, Lisa Kudrow and Jennifer Aniston, the only two to win Emmys of the five of the six that were nominated for Emmys. Amazingly and upsettingly, the newest love of my life, Courtney Cox, was never nominated for playing Monica. Never! Shame on the television academy. But oh well, the 2002 win for Outstanding Comedy Series made a lot of fans forgive that monstrous flop. Anyway. The beginning of this article encapsulates all six cast members' feelings as individuals and as a group reunited for the first time entering Stage 24 for the first time in decades, the Friends stage on the Water Butter slot in Burbank. After that, we have a group Q&A with People Magazine and all six of the Central Perk Six. 
which talks a lot about their emotions from the set. It also talks about what kind of props they took from the set, their chemistry, their thoughts on the writing, which was certainly some impeccable writing going on, which is all pretty much condensed in the Friends Lightning Round. Who was the first to rule the scene by laughing? Who was the first to flub their lines? Who was the most emotional filming their scenes? And which this star with the Central Park sits love to bring back? For Cardi and Lisa, it would be a tie for Paul Rudd. And you wanna know why for Lisa? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because Paul Rudd's character, aka Mike Flanagan, tamed Phoebe's wild child heart by putting a diamond leash on her rain finger, so to speak. As far as the biggest fronts with each other, well, it's unanimous. Jennifer and David, Ross and Rachel. As far as them admitting their quest in real life, they didn't do so here, but they definitely did so in the HBO Max reunion, which definitely once again sent fans into a full-fledged tizzy. However, I believe if they became each other's lobsters in real life, they would have disrupted the flow of their friendship, and anyone who's seen Ross and Rachel's roller coaster ride take place over the first four seasons would know that no good would come from those occurrences. 18 pages of lament, a list of pros and cons, a breakup, manipulation, saying the war name at the wedding. Yeah. I'm glad these two decide to channel their feelings for each other into making their performances stronger. This is then and now. You see here a photo of the Friends cast then, with individual summations of what the cast has been up to, since the Friends scattered at Central Park one last time for one last cup of coffee, and then closed it down for good. I have to say, in terms of merits, big props to Lisa Kudrow, the lone survivor, aka the one who's still married. I wish I could be a Mike, but I don't have feelings for Phoebe. I wish I could be Jennifer Aniston's lobster. Or in this case, Rachel's lobster. But, I don't have feelings for her. And that's really a shock for me to admit, because of how lovely Jennifer Aniston is. And believe you me, anyone that says otherwise, is just lying to you. And in regards to the friends related article, as if all that fun wasn't enough, there's one last feature on the back of this to put an appropriate point on this 10 year long sentence. Need I say more? Jennifer Aniston for Vino Skincare. Y'all know that Monica is my lobster. Or should I say, my sea bass. And that's fitting because, believe it or not, Courtney's middle name is Bass. Courtney Bass Cotts. Heaven help you, Matthew Perry, if you ever come do a book tour and stop at bookends for your new book coming out. Because I'm going to have to voice some grievances on why you didn't marry Monica sooner. This Friends article is a real home one. But just for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and check out the Us Weekly Friends Reunion article. It's two pages, where People's Magazine's article is six pages long. People Magazine keeps it professional and definitely more humane. This one is a little more scandal forward. Come on, Us Weekly, have a heart. Their then and now section down below is similar to people's, except this is purely professional. People get a little more personal in their then and now section. Uh, this particular magazine's review will be linked below if you want to check it out. It's from February 22nd, 2001. But in the meantime, I gotta say this, far superior. But enough about that, let's move on to 50 things to do, eat, and see now that we can finally travel again. Well, the very least, 50 things to do, eat, and see back in 2021, last year. Hey, there's still plenty of time. This seems like, what, almost a year old. So now that that is up a list of 50 things that you'll want to check off of your bucket list now that we are allowed to travel once again out of our homes. We're going to keep this as pop culture oriented as possible, but appropriately I must start with finding the best lobster world in America. Ross and Rachel, this is for you. Perfectly you would find the best lobster, as people did at the Clam Shack in Kennebuckport, Maine. It's simplicity at its finest. Kind of like friends in terms of simple smart comedy. Sweet, locally caught lobster, melted butter and mayo, piled on a freshly baked, round white roll. If that doesn't satiate your appetite for American adventure, 
How about this? Another little case of doing just that. Eating the best fried chicken of your life at Willie Mae's Scotch House Restaurant in New Orleans. Their perfectly seasoned chicken is dipped in a red batter, deep fried, green and crunchy golden crust that encases the moist meat within. After you have your fair share of America's best seats, how about you stay a spell at a real-life movie location house, like these two bed and breakfasts for Groundhog Day and Steel Magnolias in Illinois and in Louisiana, respectively. How about a lakeside cabin 20 minutes outside of Atlanta for Adventures Endgame, or the Twilight Swan House in St. Helens, Oregon for, what else? It. Twilight. Back on the food front, how about a taste of the Magnolia Life? Whether you travel to Chip and Joanna Gaines Silos Bakery Company in Waco, Texas, their hometown, or take it home with you, almost literally, with their recipe for Silo cookies. Or how about a taste of Priyanka Chopper Jonas's Manhattan Indian restaurant, Sona, with our recipe for spinach and goat cheese samosas. By the way, Sona means gold in Hindi. The name was suggested by our husband, Nick Jonas. Reasons 32 to 35 to travel more often? Catching the show at an open air venue, like the Hollywood Bowl, the performance space built under the Hollywood Hills, hosting everyone from the Beatles to Aretha Franklin and, of course, the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra, plus Christina Aguilera and her. Second best option would be Tanglewood, basically the Hollywood Bowl of the East in Boston where you can catch the Boston Symphony Orchestra or Boston Pops play. Bonus points if either concert is conducted by the Maestro of the Gods and Conductor Laureate of the Boston Pops Orchestra, John Williams. How about a play on the Field of Dreams Diamond, where the Yankees and White Sox did battle recently? Digging into the original Detroit-style pizza at Buddy's. Or finally, cruising the Pacific Coast Highway from Monterey to Big Sur along California's coast. This 30 mile stretch of Highway 1 is one of the country's best road trips for sparkly views of the ocean and cliffs. Any one of these reasons or several other of the 50 reasons highlighted in this multi-page article is sure to get you inspired to travel more often now that we can finally do so without too much fear of social distancing and masking up and all that stuff. Give for one mistake, and that would be this. The first page in here, for the promo of America's Got Talent on NBC, almost completely torn out. So that's why it gets four and a half out of five claps. But other than that, when time, space, and budget allows, I will definitely start hunting down the remaining nine seasons of Friends on DVD. And believe you me, I'm one-tenth of the way there. Judging by how often the full season bot sets on DVD and across the Best of Compilation DVDs come to the fifth store, it won't be long before this library is filled to the brim in a way that would make the Central Park Six scream with pride. Oh my god! With friends like these, an article like this, and a dream girlfriend like you, Monica. I don't think I'll become an enemy of this show anymore. Thanks for watching TSR. Now, to see another awesome review like this one, click here. If you want to become a Hollywood bargain hunter, click here to subscribe. Now, catch you on the thrift side.